Cruising can be expensive and costs add up quickly if you don't have a clear budget plan. For this video, we compiled a list of 25 tips you can use to save money on your next cruising vacation. Let's get straight to it. Let's start off with the booking process. There are a lot of ways you can save while booking a cruise. Most important of which is probably the time of booking. We tend to give out two tips to people to find the cheapest cruises. Number one, book early. And number two, book late. Now these might seem contradictive at first, but cruises really are cheaper six plus months before and in the last two weeks before a cruise. If you're flexible with times and don't care that much about the ship or its destinations, you can find amazing last minute deals. If you already know the exact cruise you want to go on early on, make sure to use price alerts and keep an eye out for sales, especially during wave season, which is from mid-December to early March. That is when cruise lines tend to have the best deals and discounts for you. Another less known way to save on booking cruises is by using gift card reseller. You can sometimes get cruise line vouchers at an up to 8% discount from sites like Raise.com, where people sell gift cards they do not need. I've linked a couple of different resellers down below for you to check out, as even a 5% discount quickly adds up to hundreds of dollars. Make sure to also look at your credit card provider's benefits, as some, like American Express, offer special deals for cruisers, ranging from onboard credit to free cabin upgrades. For staterooms, many cruise lines offer so-called guaranteed cabins, which do not allow you to choose the room of your choice, but are a couple hundred dollars cheaper than other options. If you don't care which deck your cabin is on, where it is located, and if it has an obstructed view or not, this is a great way to save a bit of cash. Lastly, consider taking repositioning cruises from one region to another. They're usually off season and they're extremely cheap if you can find affordable one-way plane tickets back. Next up is your cruise preparation. There are a couple of things you should be aware of before starting your cruise to make sure that you do not overpay while on board. Firstly, the alcohol policy. Different cruise lines have different rules on how many alcoholic beverages you are allowed to bring on board at the start of your voyage and in ports of call. Make sure to use up your allowance if you know that you will consume alcohol on board, as drinks can be very expensive. The same obviously goes for water bottles, sodas, snacks, and anything else you might need during your vacation. But keep in mind that cruise lines offer beverage packages, which allow passengers to drink an unlimited amount of sodas, alcoholic drinks, and more for a daily fee. If you drink a lot, I would suggest doing the math and seeing if such packages would be the right option for you. If you haven't already, join the Cruise Lines Loyalty Program. Starting from your second cruise, you will receive benefits like free drinks, buy one get one free offers, and special events. And now, some tips for your actual cruise when you're on board a ship. Most importantly, have a clear budget. Many passengers come back only to realize they spend way more than they expected do not let that happen to you. Try to avoid getting the internet package and only use the Wi-Fi when going ashore in cafes or bars. Schedule spa services for port days instead of sea days as they can be as much as 50% cheaper. If you want to go to a specialty restaurant on board, do so for lunch instead of dinner. When going to the casino, keep in mind that the payouts are even worse than they are in casinos on land. Make sure to have a budget for your casino trips as well and keep it relatively low stakes. Onboard stores and art auctions are rip-offs, plain and simple. If you want to have souvenirs, buy them at destinations outside the port complex from locals. 
And in general, think of onboard prices relative to prices back home. Would you really pay $40 to $60 per person for a meal out? Or $15 for a simple cocktail? Just because you are on vacation doesn't mean you have to pay extra for things you can do back home as well. And lastly, know the exchange rate before heading out to port. Many exchange offices are out for your money and ATMs charge high transaction fees. So be aware and prepare. Here's a quick summary of all tips mentioned in this video. Feel free to screenshot for future references. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed and found at least some of these tips helpful and relevant to you. If you have any questions, just leave a comment down below. And if you want to see more such content, leave a like and subscribe, or check out some of our other videos. And remember to keep cruising.